Hey, I'm Candia Raquel, founder of Centro de Poder. Welcome to the Sensual Sessions number nine with Cecile Raynor. Welcome, Cecile. It's such an honor to have you here. Thank you, Candia, for inviting me. And I am very curious to know more about your take on sensuality since I saw a little bit about your work uh, with musicians and also painting. And it was very interesting for me to see and, and know about your discourse on the merging of the musician and the instrument that it's also <laughs> reflected in the paintings. And then I wonder about uh, how, how do you work this, this connection that it's not only performing, but an actual merging. And for me, that's very essential has to do with yeah. that. So tell us about it. Yeah. So so first of all, you know, I just want to say that's kind of my background. I'm a Renaissance woman. I I, I dance, I paint, I um, I teach Alexander, my version of Alexander, which is very much uh, about integrated functioning and, and fluid movement. Um, so so that's very much part of of, of who I am and what I do. Um, sensuality, um, I think that there's different types of sensuality. I think that there is, you could say body part sens sensuality. So like, you know, a gliding of your fingers on, on, on the skin, on your skin or on somebody else's skin. <laughs> so that, that people think of that, you know, as being yeah. sensual and, and it is definitely a, a form of sensuality but I like to think of sensuality in terms of a whole person yeah. whole body so that it includes everything uh, integrated movement fragrance uh, colors you know I think that everything about a human being can be sensual yes. and and also I want to make a distinction between sensual and sexual yes. because very often people confuse sexual with sensual for example even dancers yes um yoga practitioners sexuality takes you to an extreme you go to yes. orgasm right and, ah. and so that's going to the extreme of something yes. and people do yoga that way they they and they sometimes they'll dance that way but to me that is not the sensuality that I'm interested in um, or, or yes, but it's not the same sen sensuality I'm talking about. Let's <laughs> put it that way. Um, the, the sexuality for me belongs in the privacy of, yes. you know, privacy, but sensuality can be on the stage. It can be how you practice yoga. It can be how you come across in your artwork, in your teaching, you know, everything. Um, and so that, when it's like that, for me, that means that you don't go to an extreme. Sens sensuality is not going to the extreme. It's, it's savoring, savoring what leads you there. <laughs> you yes, know? yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It's about the journey. It's about the journey, exactly. So when people do, let's say, yoga, and they do, um, you know, and they're like, uh, <laughs> they're compressing yeah. their head and, they, and they, their breast is pushing forward and they're arching their back. This is, this is not, first of all, it's not true yoga. Yeah. Uh, and I work with yoga teachers, by the way. So, but um, it's, it's missing the essential dimension of being whole. When you go to that extreme, you disconnect actually on some level. And you're already stuck. You, you arrive and you have nowhere else to go. Exactly. It's not the journey. It's, it's, um, but it, it's, it's not even in line with what yoga is about. It's not in line with, so dancing, dancing, you know, if, if there's a choreography and you're asked to do that, well, it, it might be, it has a purpose in the story of the choreography, but if you're just dancing by yourself, or I mean, not by, by yourself or with others, yes. then I think that if you're going to be dancing with somebody, you want to be, there, there has to be some openness. There has to be some 
arena where they could be emerging of the yeah, two. And a dialogue. Yeah. Yes, and it's a, a dialogue, like other. the dance is you do one step forward and then maybe back. And so that is not possible when people are really going to, to, to the extreme because they've already, as you say, they, they locked <laughs> the, the step, you know. Yes. So, so for me, it's very much related to my work yes. because what I teach and my work is not, um, it includes Alexander, but it goes beyond it. That's why. I say I teach the Alexander technique, but I also teach the BIA process. The yes. BIA process means body intelligence activation process. Yes. So I teach people how to activate their body intelligence so that they can enjoy kinesthetic movement, which is not just, it's, it's a mix of fluidity and expansion. Yes. So dancers might, be fluid but they they kind of collapse in, in, in at times you know to, yes. they think they they confuse releasing with relaxing so they or collapsing yes uh -huh, so like they collapse. instead of a state of of availability that is relaxing yes which is more dynamic it's yeah. more open it's more it, it it's pregnant with possibilities yes. <laughs> Spacious. Spacious, exactly. Because, because collapse, it's also fixed. It's exactly. Extreme. Exactly. And, and then when you collapse, you, you tend to pull yourself out. The next, so pulling and collapsing are the two extreme. But when you keep it spacious and expanded, even if you have to curve your body, you don't collapse into the curve, you know? So... Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I teach, and that has a lot to do with joints. Um, Articulation. Yes, they, you need space in your joints. Most people have tight joints. So sometimes they, they, they may move in a way that, you know, like I can see somebody dancing and I can tell how, how fluid their energy is or not. And just from looking at them, that's why I can teach online because I just had a session and um, somebody who has been studying the Alexander technique for a long time and ah, it was missing the BIA process there. <laughs> so um, it's because Alexander is known to be, you know, you receive hands-on from a teacher mm -hmm. and it can do it already. She's in a much better shape than she would have been. Um, but very often people get dependent on those hands and yes. they don't know how to do it for themselves. Yes. They don't have the tools. And, but that's the BIA process. I've developed a way to empower people to activate their body intelligence themselves. And it has a lot to do with how you handle your joints and how you handle your, how you connect with your skeletal structure more than your muscles for strength. People think strength comes from uh, tensing, <laughs> tensing the muscle. That's, that's gripping again. That's gripping, exactly. Yeah. And again, we end up in that place of there's no space left when you grasp. So, or when you control with your muscles or, you know, things like that. So there's, so pe and people think they have to do this because they think that's how you, they get strong. But what I've discovered is actually Let's say if you do yoga or if you move or anything, if you can relax, release in expansion mm -hmm. and into your support. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But you keep the pose. Let's say you're doing a chair pose. You, you stay in the pose, but you keep releasing through your feet. Mm -hmm. You will trigger energy to flow. It's dynamic. It's holding. And, but at the same time, your, your necessary muscle tension has to do something it works with the other muscle to keep you in that position. So it becomes strong, but it becomes strong in a flexible way because you're not tensing. So mm -hmm. tensing doesn't add more strength. It only adds excess tension. What develops the strength is when you, you stay in a pose or in an activity while you keep releasing in a state of expansion. And when you do that, your body organically will develop more 
strength, but it's going to be flexible strength. And flexible strength allows for movement. Yeah, allows for movement. So kinesthetic movement, fluid movement, sensuality. For me, it's all coming together. It's all that energy flowing and space. And yeah, exactly. Movement and, and being alive. And now that you mentioned that one can become sort of dependent of the practitioner hands and how BIM yes. uh, practice helps like to, to become the self-reference. And I believe that's key in sensuality in our times that often people can only connect through sensuality through the mirror. Like they look good and then they connect with the body. So it's like a whole detour from, from the self or maybe in an extreme only can connect to pleasure through chocolate and, and, and then they, they got locked and want another piece of chocolate, but it won't feel as good as the first because there's not, it's the dialogue of this movement that you mentioned and this dance with say the environment or the mo moment, um, it's, it's inherited or locked or even like feeling or believing that sensuality is about wearing lingerie i i mean of course but the thing is yeah, and, and also the body yeah people think that sensuality is something that happens if you're if you're trying to um you know you're in with 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 another partner and yeah. there's some sexual energy and so they think that sensuality and sexuality are completely intertwined and they can be yes they can be sensuality can be a way to sexuality but i think that it's it, wider it, it's it's much wider than that and like you say it's something that comes from the inside out yes it's not something that you yeah it comes from the inside out that, that you need to use something external to get into that that state but yeah what would be like a like a tip that you could share with us to to get into the this state of, of flow of connecting with the intelligence of the body and connect to pleasure whether mm -hmm. it's just for going to a walk to to be more in connection to one's to oneself or maybe even to perform like what's what's um an advice or a taste that you could give us from your work yeah so so i mean that question of course is it, it's different from what i um you know what i would be teaching in a private session or in a group session because i don't necessarily present my work as I'm teaching sensua sensuality, even though it's part of it. But, but to answer your question, I would say that the more people are aware of their body as a whole, as opposed to just part of them. Okay, yeah, as a whole. Their body as a whole, whether the sensual activity is to eat chocolate or flirt with another guy or woman or whatever, or... Um, whatever it is that, that they associate with sensuality, plug into their whole being. Mm. Plug into all the dimension of the moment and be in the present moment and, and choose to let go of any grasping. Grasping is the opposite of sensuality. Yes. Let go of any grasping in your muscles Think of softening your joints. You may not know what that means, but in Alexander, we work with the nervous system. So you just need to have the thought, I choose to soften my armpits. I choose to soften my joints. <laughs> Very effective. Yeah. <laughs> I choose to really seem to connect with divine mother under my feet by letting go of any excess tension, let it flow right through my body. Those are the kind of thoughts that will connect you to the, it, it will turn into a channel for your own sensuality. Yes. And, you know, at the very beginning, you, you, you were saying how in my artwork, you can see 
um, how the musician and the musician and the instrument become okay. one. Yeah. And they become one because when I teach musicians, it's the same thing. I, I want them to learn what I just explained so that they become one with their instrument so they can both be a channel for the music. Yes. Yes. So they, that's the only way you can let, you can be a good channel for the music. If you're controlling and holding and there's interference, there's interference. So you, somebody might be already a great musician, but they, they would become even a better one <laughs> if yeah. they could stop all that holding, grasping. And, and it's easier said than done because if people have harmful habitual pattern of movement, it's hard to let go into expansion. Yeah. They have to relearn how to let go into expansion. Relearn. Because it's not a positioning. It's <laughs> not fixed. No, it's not fixed. And it's certainly not a positioning. So, um, so there is some learning there that needs to happen. But, but basically, whether same with a dancer. If there's no grasping, the dancer can become a channel for the dance. A speaker, if there's no grasping and there's an awareness of how to soften into expansion and stay connected to your breath and your support, then they become a channel for what they're trying to communicate. I so, think. yeah. So, I mean, you, I don't know, this is going to be a podcast, right? So people don't see me, but you, you can see I, I'm talking with my whole body. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's just the way it is. And, As and a whole. The, yes. The, the all that you are here in your body in in yeah. unity and it's a, not a fixed unity it's it's uh who you are as you are at the exact moment that changes in the next moment and the next mm -hmm. moment and it's fascinating because what you mentioned about um musicians dancers uh, people that speak in public Those are high performance activities of an uh, utmost high demand from the body and from the, the mental abilities of processing and from the discourse. And there's a cultural myth of the no pain, no gain, and oh, you have to yeah. hustle and struggle. And that is contrary to the Absolutely. high performance. And uh -huh. yeah, and and actually, I mean, I don't know if you know that I wrote a book called The Wise Way to Yoga. It, yeah. It's really the wise way to fitness, you know. But it, it I do use uh, yoga because it's very intertwined to modern fitness. Yeah. Um, and what I explain in there is that you know sometimes you ask people, do you believe in no pain, no gain? And they're like, oh no, 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 no. But they still believe in no strain, no gain, and. To me, that's just a, uh, it's a, it's a um, toned down version of the same thing. They, if people tend to resist ease, they, yeah. they think that if, if it's easy, if it's effortless, intellectually, they want that. But in their body, they resist it because they feel like they're not doing enough. If they're not feeling the muscle strengthening or the... Not or the, in the extreme that you mentioned. They, they think they're not doing enough. And it's true both for stretching and, and strengthening. And so that's part of the mindset that I'm trying to change with my work. And it's and so important. Yeah, it's very important because it, it's, you know, we're all a product of the 19th century when it comes to how we move and, 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 and what we think about posture. All of those, we are a product of the 19th century. And people are not even aware that they're influenced by by the beginning of modern fitness. They just, because everybody's doing it the same way. But I think that we, a lot of people, especially in the yoga world, in the dance world, people have realized that if we do it with this old paradigm, people get hurt. Yes. yes. Either they get hurt and real, real injuries. I mean, I know a lot of yoga teachers who ended up with hip surgery, knee surgery, that kind of thing. But sometimes you get hurt because you're not using your body the way it was designed to be used right. and therefore people have con chronic tension yeah. so they think it's part of life they say it's a stress of life and all that nine times out of ten it's not the stress of life 
is the better stress solution. Is enhance the tension that's already there, created by the misuse of the body, the misuse of the mind, yes, rushing and, and cutting corner and, and, you know. So this, this work is all about paying attention to the process without losing touch with the whole. So sometimes dancers think like, okay, or, or I'm gonna be aware of the process. So they go like one vertebrae at a time into <laughs> stretching, for example. There's nothing wrong to do that if you really want to do that, but it's just if you do that repeatedly, you're, you're not connected to your body intelligence. You're connected to your habitual body. Does it feel good or does it not feel good? That you're connected to that. But your habitual body, what feels good for your habitual body is not necessarily what feels good for your body intelligence. Yes. But what feels good for your body intelligence will always feel good for your habitual body. <laughs> I mean, for your body. Yeah. I should, yeah. So, so there's a lot of distinction. In fact, at the end of my book, I have like two or three pages of distinctions that people don't make, but that are essential to learn to be not just more embodied because yoga teachers, dancers, they think they're embodied, right? Because they're working with the body. But I know from experience that there's a deeper level of embodiment when you function as an integrated role. So yes. I'm teaching embodiment, but I'm teaching integrated embodiment, yes. which is very different. And, you know, for me, to be honest with you, when I was younger in my thirties, I was exercising three hours a day. I thought that if I feel my muscles strengthen and stretch and I get all red and sweaty, I was doing good, good because that's what we, we were told. Yes. And I didn't know any better. And I figured, okay, I'm working on a PhD in French literature yes. and I'm ex exercising three hours a day. I thought I was connected to my mind and my body until I got pregnant with my first child. Oh. And one day, I, I caught myself at the library with my very pregnant belly squished against the table. And had I not been pregnant, I probably wouldn't have even noticed because I was very much in my head. My head was telling my body what to do. <laughs> and, um, and we are in a society of head, glorified intellect. But because I was pregnant, I remember it as if it was yesterday. I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing to my baby? And what am I doing to my body? And that somebody else might have thought that and then moved on. <laughs> but because of my calling, um, it, it became this amazing insight that changed my career. I was being successful as a PhD uh, in literature. My professors already had planned where I was going to be teaching and and I told them I need to get out of academia. Oh. I, yeah, I. They thought I was crazy <laughs> because you know you don't work on a PhD and be very successful and then suddenly do a U-turn. But I, to me, it was not exactly a U-turn. It was like me going to the next step of yes. who I can be, and I decided to become an Alexander Technic teacher. And it actually really transformed my life. I mean, um, it transformed my artwork. It transformed, it made, helped me be a better mom. It, it, it just helped me in so, so many ways. And, you know, I even have a, a, a picture. I don't know if I can share. Can I share with you something? I, 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 think, I think, I think if you click on next to participant, no, uh, there's a place where you can click maybe next to video. Uh, no. In, in more. Mm. Thank you. I know, I know how to do it when it's me, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We, we can share the image in, in, the, in the blog post version that will include the video. Yeah. And for all that are listening, <laughs> Spotify, so that, please come but, to, to the website. I'll share the link on the end. Yeah. So, so what I wanted to show you is... I have a drawing that I did when I was a teenager. It, it's a portrait. And you can see how detailed it is. Like I remember using an eraser um, pencil to do the polka dot and the hair. And it was very, very controlled. And in retrospect, 
I, I must have been really uptight when I did those drawings. I wanted to get it right, you know? Yeah, get it right. The perfectionist. Exactly. But, but now my artwork, as you saw, yeah, I actually draw. Exquisite. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just draw the, the movement. I don't even look at my paper when I draw. After I draw, then I turn it into a three-dimensional artwork. But initially, the initial drawing, I do it without even looking at my paper. <sighs> so that transformation between what I used to do and what I'm doing now, that is the transformation I offer every single student of mine. That's the transformation that's needed in the yoga world. That's the transformation that anybody who wants to become a channel for their art or their activity or whatever, they need to go through that transformation. Yes, yes. And you mentioned kinesthetic artwork. Yes. And, and now that you mentioned that you don't look at the paper, then you, well, I was going to say that you paint with your body, but of course, if a painter or if anyone writes in a post-it, you don't write with your hand, you write with the whole body. And if you have... Yes, I, I see where you're, you're going with that. So, so yes, sometimes when I explain to people that I draw without looking at that paper, their first reaction is like, oh yeah, it's blind drawing. I've done blind drawing. And I say, no, it's, uh -huh. it's more than blind drawing because a blind drawing, a child can do a blind drawing. Yes. A child cannot do what I do. <laughs> and what I do comes from my connection to my kinesthetic body, my sensual body. Yes. And it, in my case, yes, it is my whole being, let mm -hmm. alone my whole body, that is capturing the movement because and I capture it the way it, feel, it feels in my body. So, yes. yes. I become one with my drawing. <laughs> with the pencil. And how wonderful would it be if we all could become one with the cell phone or, let, for example, the, the cell phone, that yeah. as soon as I often pick up the, the cell phone, I drop my head and all yeah. of its weight out of the, the axis of my body. So it's me responding to an external object. Absolutely falling completely out of my center and it's connecting, yeah. connecting and with this key image that you have shared with us and more than an image an experience of the body as a whole not body parts and and painting becoming one with the painting i mean from now on i am gonna become one with my phone yes. every time so i answer a whatsapp <laughs> Or, yeah, or, so or, what I recommend is, you know, talking about a tip, instead of letting your head and neck collapse down to yeah. see the, the screen, you want to bring the screen higher. And if you, if you know you're going to be there for a while, you can support it with your other hand. Or if you have a chair, you can put your elbow on a chair, on the, top, the back of a chair. This way, you don't have to collapse your head and neck yeah. down. You know? Absolutely. I am very happy because... And I, I, immediately, I felt my my the range of my breathing in my ribcage like expand. Yeah. And, and it's yes. yeah, and also it's not like I am I am hidden doing something hidden with a cell phone. No, I am I am organizing and becoming one with the experience. And how how something so like mundane and even banal is people think like scrolling in Instagram is banal, can become a full experience where you involve, get fully involved and make it, instead of something robotic and mechanic, you find a way to organize yourself and make it a pleasurable experience when you involve. Yeah, well, that's what happened when, so the tip I gave you, there's yeah. one, one piece missing, is once you've done that, you still want to release the weight of the phone and your personal weight through your whole body yeah. so that the earth is supporting the weight of the phone through yeah. your body. Yeah. I can feel it. Yeah. It makes up so, because it's again, fun. it's becoming, it's, it's turning any activity into a whole body experience. Yes. That is, and when you do that, you, it, you get access to the present moment. Yes. And that is 
that is what I do with everything, whether it's yoga, dancing, writing, um, drawing, painting, <laughs> you know. It's about life. It's about how one it's, lives it's life. It's about being present. It's about me being mindful. But also, you know, I always say you can only be mindful of the things you're aware of. Yeah. So that's why my work is to, uh, I see myself as somebody who helps people expand their awareness so they can benefit from their mindfulness more. Yes. Yes. Oh, wonderful, Cecile. I want to ask you more million questions and tell everybody <laughs> to know more. So I better um, ask you to tell us how can we learn more about what you're doing, both yeah. your Alexander work and your book, or, or if you have a yeah. place to see your artwork that we have referred so much here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so first of all, my um My website is my name, cecilereynor.com, C-E-C-I-L-E-R-A-Y-N-O-R.com. And my artwork website is studiocecile.com. Yeah. And um, so usually things will be posted there. I also have a Facebook page. Um, um what do I'm trying to remember? I think it's called the BIA process, BIA for body intelligence activation process. It's, it's a trademarked process to promote integrated functioning, yes. which is really the essence of all this. And, and what's unique about that, Alexander is also about that, except that I'm teaching people to do it for themselves. And I, my perspective is from a mind, body, heart, and soul perspective. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so it's not just the mind, body, but, um, but I focus on whatever people are ready for, you know, knowing that it's naturally going to expand in, in the other uh, dimensions. Um, right now, um, as you know, because I think that's how you connected with me, I'm offering... Um, And um, I'm offering a workshop for musicians. Yeah. Um, and um, I've always worked with musicians. I love music and musicians. And, um, and a lot of them do need that help because they love their music, but they're bringing their daily habits to their performance um, practice. And often um, it's, it's very hard for people to um, merge with their instrument to become yes. a channel for their music yes. and eventually they end up with you know shoulder problem or yeah. back L like or you or the iphone or exactly. whatever we used to work yeah exactly so so i'm looking forward to that it's an, even though i've worked with musician always for you know i've been teaching for 30 years but this is a new venture for me to actually Um, work with musicians as a target audience. So yeah. hopefully I'll get enough people signing up so I can keep going with that. And that's so for all the musicians, go, go with Cecile. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I am going to post in awesome. the website your, your link. So if, if uh, you're, the audience is listening in Spotify, please come to the, to the website and check the links there or or pause and go back where Cecile at <laughs> Thank you so much, Cecile. This has been an extraordinary essential session. Uh, we, we have learned a lot with you, a lot of gold about sensuality, understanding the difference of going to the limits, also understanding the context and the difference between sensuality, sexuality, and how, why body movement intelligence it's so important and how we can apply it if we are musicians dancers or even regular people that absolutely have their absolutely. Phone glued to the hand it's i work with every everyone and but you know my 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 two specialties uh, uh, currently are still the yoga teachers and yoga practitioners and musicians but i really In my private practice, I work with everyone that's interested. Um, in we, we, we all have a body. Thank you so much, Cecile. 
it's been a pleasure. Well, thank you for having me here. And um, until next time. Until <laughs> next time. And for the essentialist listening or watching, thank you for being here. Remember to take the time to know your fire so you can share the flame. And if you're not already on the essential emails, come to centraldepoder.com and make sure to su subscribe to get the essential sessions right on your email every week. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.